Welcome back to another Essential Finance video where I use design to help simplify all those confusing and hard to understand finance concepts. A while back, I posted four videos on the basics of option trading and they seem to be pretty useful for many of you. But here's a minor issue that I realized. For example, if you sell a put, how would the price of that put option change over time? Can you buy the put back early before expiration? When can you do that and what will happen in real time? So in this video, I'm going to answer all those questions by showing you how selling a put option will work in real time as a live demo, as a live simulation with real option data. There are quite a few cases to cover, so let's get started right now. Morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. And yes, I'm a designer and I'm here today to use my design skills and thinking to help further explain selling put options. Specifically, I'll be using the TD Ameritrade Think or Swim platform to give you a live demo, a live simulation on selling a put option and show you step by step how the price of that put option changes over time and how much money you will make or lose over time. And lastly, of course, when can you close that put position? Previously, I've explained selling put options in a simple and visual way. I highly recommend you check that out so that you understand the mechanism behind it and such that you don't get confused halfway through this video. Again, you don't need to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video helpful or insightful. Hold me accountable. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Again, this is the TD Ameritrade Think or Swim platform. You can click the On Demand feature on the top right corner in the application to go into a different view. As you can see on the top bar, it will say virtual account, meaning all the money that you'll be using uh, in this will be fake money, paper money. It's a great way for you to practice, to take a look at what will happen if you do certain things or you trade stocks or options. So after we turn off the privacy filter, now you can see we have 100K to spend cash. We have 100K option buying power and 200K stock buying power, all right? In this demo, I'm gonna use Tesla as the underlying stock. So let's go over the first case. Tesla goes up so that the Tesla put price can go down. This is what you want. You're the seller, you want this. You want the strike price of the put that you're selling below the stock price on Friday on expiration, which is called out of the money. As a seller, as an option seller, you want it to be out of the money because that's when you win. So we can go back in time uh, to maybe April 12, 2021 at 9.35 a.m. California time. So we are on the trade tab. We are, on, we are with Tesla option chains with trading option. We want to, let's say, do the options that expire on this Friday, April 16th. So today is 12, 16, so like four days away. That's why it says four here. So let's say I don't think Tesla is going to go below 6.60. This week right now it's 699 i don't think it's going to go down that much or if it ever goes down so i can sell i can sell a negative one i can sell a 660 put for 435 so what i mean is that i'm selling this 660 put and i receive 635 dollars because remember in option trading it trades in the block of 100 so you have to always multiply this by 100 okay so we can see confirm and send Right, max profit, we can have a profit of $435 by doing so. And then you see my option trading power is 100K. So I have enough money to be held as collateral for this trade to happen. So I can hit send, right? So you can see I have a position now. My cash just went up, not just 435, I got 440. I got paid 440. But again, I have an open position and you see the option trading power went down. That means I can do less thing with options. So if I go to my monitor, I click the drop down. I can see I have a 660 put, a negative one. Negative one means I sold, I sold this option to somebody. I got 440 cash ready to spend on anything else, but I have an open position. So this 440 that I, that I just received, it's not a definite thing yet because the net could be maybe 410, maybe 390, depending on how the Tesla stock price ends up on Friday. But at least I know I can earn maximum 440 this week by selling this 660 put option. So we can go to April 13th, fast forward one day, and we can go back to the trade. Maybe we can hit play to refresh the data a little bit. 
So on April 13th, 935, one day later after we sold the 660 put, right now, you see the position, right? The 660 put, right now, it's only worth $96.5. So if we go back to monitor, we go back to the account, we can see we sold it at 440. It's not trading at 69.5. If I were to buy back the 660 put to close out this position, it only cost me $96. I sold it for $440. I just need $96 to close it. So if I look at my profit, I'm already up on paper $343.50, right? I'm already up. So what can I do? Uh, let's go back to the option chain. All right, so we can right click. We can create closing order. And you see, just note that there's no exercise button here because we are the sellers. Sellers cannot exercise. Only the buyers can exercise, okay? So we can close it. I oh, I'm really happy. I'm satisfied with this amount of profit. One day I make three hundred bucks. I'm happy with this. So I can just close it. Spend ninety six. I think uh, confirm and send. Okay, it's not exactly ninety six. So we can bump it up to ninety seven. Confirm and send. Boom. Right. See the notification. We have closed the position. So right now the 660 put uh, has zero quantity. That means we close it. We are good. We profited. We pocketed $343 for good. That's it. You see the option buying power went back to its normal plus the profit that we have. So we can sell more options essentially. Or let's say we go back to April 12th, right? 9.35. We sold the same 660 put. Okay. And on Tuesday, we know for a fact that we're already up, right? It's only cost us $96, $97 to close it. But I think, hmm, Tesla is going to keep going up. It's not going to hit $660. i will be safe. I can wait, right? I am a little bit greedy. I wait. So let's go to April 16th, 1235. Let's say 25 minutes before the market closes to that's the time that I would like to close my positions, let's say. So now let's check again. April 16th, Friday, 12th. 35, 660 put, it's only 0 0.005, 0 0.5 cents, okay? So if we go to the monitor, go back to the account, we see we almost maxed out the 440 that we initially got, right? We traded at 440. To close it, we need 0.5 cents. This is great. This is amazing. So there are two things I can do right now. One, I can right click, I can close it, spend a dollar. There's no way to go down even more on TD Ameritrade. So I can spend one dollar to close it just for good, keep, give me a peace of mind, and then I can be done with it. Or I can choose to do nothing since it's so far away from the actual price. The current price is $737. My put strike is 660. I don't think within the next 25 minutes it's gonna go down that much. I can leave it. So after I leave it and my option, my put option, that the one that I sold, is out of the money, right? It's not in the purple area. The purple is in the money. It's out of the money right now for the option. It's good for a seller. It's good for me. So I can leave it, and then after the market closes, the brokerage is going to look into my account and say, oh, this guy has a 660 put open position. Since it's out of the money, the broker will just close this put option for me. I don't have to do anything about it. But for me, just for the sake of uh, sanity, I'm just going to spend a dollar, buy it, give it a net zero, boom, all done. So the second case, Tesla goes down, which means the Tesla put price will go up. This is not what you want. You don't want this. You don't want Tesla to go down. You don't want the strike price ends up higher than the actual stock price at expiration. As a put option seller, you don't want your put option ends up to be in the money. So let me illustrate this by looking at another example. So we can go back to March 15th, Monday, 9.35 California time. Hmm, I'm very bullish on Tesla. I don't think it's going to go down. So I may want to sell a 670 put on Tesla, okay? 670. I don't think it's going to go down. And I think this put option is going to stay out of the money the whole time. So I should be okay. So I'm going to hit confirm, hit send, cha-ching. Okay, I actually just sell it higher they gave me a better price so i sold it for one thousand and thirty dollars so as you can see my cash and sweep vehicle it went up 10 30 okay and you see my option buying power went down because they have to take up some of my money as collateral so that in case the buyer of this put option decide to exercise i need to spend that money for that so okay i have 10 30 in my account so let's move forward let's just fast forward to friday 
12.35, again, 25 minutes before the market closes. And now we can see, ooh, something bad happened. The 7.20 is in the purple area. It ends up in the money. That's what I don't want as a seller. I don't want it to be in the money. Because remember, we first sold this put option, this 760 put option contract. I received 1030. In order to close this position, I need to spend $2,090 to close it. That's why you see the PL profit loss. I am down $1,060. Ooh, this is not great. What can I do? Well, in this case, since it ends up in the money on Friday on expiration day, I lose. I lose to my own bet. I thought Tesla's not gonna go down, but it seems like it did and my put option ends up in the money in this purple area. So to just close the position, I will have to buy it back, spend that money, I bought it and yes, I am down 1060. So if I leave it open after the market closes, it's still in the money. The broker is going to look into my account, seeing that there's a 670 put open position. Since it's in the money, they're going to exercise it for the buyer, which means on Monday, March 20. Second, you're gonna see me having a hundred shares of Tesla in my brokerage account. So what happened behind the scene was that the broker exercises. What does it do? What does that exercise mean? That buyer can sell a hundred shares of Tesla at six seventy. Who did he sell it to? He sent it to me. That's why on Monday, March. 22nd, I will get 100 shares of Tesla in my account with an average purchase price of 670. And if I don't want 100 shares in my account, then I will just have to close it before the market closes. So depending on whether you want the shares or not, you will decide to just close your put position or just leave it open. All right, guys, we have gone through a live demo, a live simulation on selling a put option on Tesla and saw exactly how the price of it would change over time all the way through the expiration day. So you can decide whether you want to close out the position early to take a profit or wait until the expiration day. So selling put options is not that complicated overall, isn't it? Do you have a better understanding of what it is now and how to execute? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you learned something new or got some useful information, Congratulations, and I hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you want to see more finance videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers!